In Malay High School, a trio friendship flourished between Bianca Piper and her gorgeous besties, Jess and Casey. They are senior students and news editors of the school publication, strengthening their bond. Bianca and her friends would confidently walk along the corridors and catch everyone's attention. It is kind of expected because no one would miss a chance to see pretty Jess Harris, Bianca's kind bestie, an aspiring fashion designer who also loves meditation, who could also resist a Latina beauty, Casey Cordero, Bianca's tough friend, soccer player, and hacker. Also, the group would not be complete without the jolly Bianca, a cult movie fanatic, the smartest but a trying hard violin player. They are fearless, and that makes their friendship stand out among others. It was an excellent day for Bianca and friends, not until the homecoming party schedule was announced. Everyone was so excited except Bianca. She didn't feel like attending and told the girls about it. Jess and Casey wondered why because they had already bought tickets online. Bianca never disclosed her reasons but said to the ladies she would be staying home and watching movies. Their conversation was interrupted when Madison Morgan came. Madison is the hottest girl in school, and even gay guys want to date her. She dreams of being a reality star and starts a YouTube channel where her best friend, Caitlin, is in charge of the camera. Bianca doesn't like her passive-aggressive behavior, so she often calls her Madison will host a party and wants to invite Jess and Casey. She handed out invitations to both of them. Caitlin made sure to capture a video as the girls open the envelope. Unlike Jess and Casey, Bianca is unpopular and unattractive, so Madison doesn't care about her. She glared at Bianca and clarified only people with invitation cards were allowed. Jess called out her rude attitude while Casey tore the invitation card and gave a piece to Bianca. Madison was annoyed and had no choice but to include Bianca. Mr. Arthur of the school publication assigned articles to his journalists. They had lacked enthusiasm for the past weeks, so he challenged them to pitch fresh ideas for the next issue. No one responded, so Mr. Arthur himself suggested writing something connected to the social life of the school. Bianca, her friends, and other journalists looked away because they were not interested in taking the article. In the end, Mr. Arthur chose Bianca to write about homecoming, specifically a title like What Homecoming Means to Me. Bianca complained because she imagined it to be like a reflection paper of five years old. However, Mr. Arthur told the lady to step out of her comfort zone and do the task. Jess and Casey were so excited because Bianca would have no reason not to attend homecoming. Bianca admitted she had no date, which made her reluctant to go there. Jess was supportive, so she scrolled all the contacts of men on her phone for her potential date. She suggested a never-ending list of men, but Bianca never liked them. Bianca dreamed of dating her longtime crush, Toby Tucker, the attractive blonde guy who plays guitar. She has been stalking him for so long and has tried talking to him, but she always ends up uttering only two to three words out of shyness. Bianca never experienced dating, and no man approaches her except Wesley Rush. He is an attractive football captain and became famous because of that. They grew up in the same neighborhood and became friends, but Bianca ended up hating him because he was annoying. Bianca was fixing things in the locker when he came. He was looking for Jess and Casey, but she only glared at him. She knew how playboy he was because they were neighbors. His window faces Bianca's room, so she witnessed the random girls he slept with. Madison was annoyed to see Bianca flirting with Wesley, so she kissed the man in front of her. Madison and Wesley are ex-lovers. They are famous on campus because of their on and off relationship status. Madison warned the lady to stay away from her ex-boyfriend. Bianca sharply stared at her and clarified that Wesley had started the conversation. The next day, Jess and Casey went to Bianca's place to dress her up for Madison's party. Jess, the fashionista of the circle, was hands on in finding a cute outfit for Bianca. She suggested a pink see-through sleeveless top, but Bianca refused to wear it because it looked like an undergarment. Jess showed another top that was darker and thick but sleeveless, so Bianca reacted similarly. The lady wants to stick with her old party shirt and layer it with red checkered long sleeves. Jess and Casey couldn't do anything but let her wear what she wanted. Bianca's mom, Dottie, arrived in the room to look at their preparation. She was against her daughter wearing a dull shirt but recommended a worse combo for a party, her ever-favorite pantsuits. Bianca was smiling inside, seeing her mom happy. Her dad left them three years ago, and Dottie never handled it well. She would cry all day drinking liquor in the yard and almost went crazy. One night, she was watching The Simpsons when a divine inspiration struck her. She became a self-help guru imparting life lessons from her traumatic experience, using the five stages of grief from the animated sitcom. Dottie wished the girls luck and left for a seminar. Party started, and loud music filled the air. Madison was serving guests when she noticed Wesley. She requested Caitlin to take some videos while she talked to him. Wesley moved away from the camera, making Madison furious. She nagged him, saying it was the right decision to break up, because there were better men to date since she was famous. Wesley was not insulted, leaving Madison irritated by his reaction. Meanwhile, Bianca arrived at the party with friends. Jess and Casey looked chic in their outfit, while Bianca wore her go-to sleeves and shirt. Jess and Casey invited her to dance, but the lady was busy looking for Toby. He was the only reason why she came, and dared herself to initiate a conversation this time. 
Bianca was thirsty, so she left to grab drinks. She was eating fruit when she spotted Toby. He is outside serenading ladies with his guitar. Bianca was about to execute her plan when she heard the annoying Wesley. He was making fun of her outfit, calling her handsome. The man approached her because he was eyeing Jess and Casey. He also keeps asking questions, irritating Bianca. Wesley casually told the lady to calm down because it's her job to answer the question as a duff, an acronym for designated ugly fat friend. Bianca was mad and glared at him. Wesley explained it is no big deal to be duff because every group of friends has one. The man believes she is the duff of their friends because she is the unattractive but approachable one. To make Bianca feel better, Wesley said Duff doesn't necessarily pertain to an ugly face. There are pretty ones, but she was designated as Duff because she has prettier besties. Duffs can also be a guy, and there is someone in their football team he sets as an example. He is the Duff of the team because he serves as the gatekeeper to better looking friends. Girls would also go to him for info. At that moment, Bianca realizes more people approach her to ask about Jess and Casey, and no one asks about her. Wesley was laughing and boasted he made sense of the Duff idea. Embarrassed, Bianca poured a drink all over him. She created a scene, and everyone looked at them. At home, Bianca was still bothered about the Duff thingy and doubted if Wesley was telling the truth. She browsed the internet and was terrified to know Wesley was right. Bianca clicked another source to confirm it. She freaked out reading more info, especially after watching a video about Duff's. She closed her laptop and lay in bed. It all made sense to her, but she was in denial. At the laboratory, Bianca was experimenting when Wesley annoyed her again. He was mad about the incident last night because it was his favorite shirt she poured a drink to. Bianca was furious and told the man she had more right to get angry after being called fat and ugly. For the second time, Wesley explained she is the duff of her friends, but it doesn't necessarily mean ugly and fat. Jess and Casey were ordering food when Bianca arrived. They wondered why she disappeared last night without informing them. They also noticed she seemed so lost and bothered about something. Bianca was pondering Wesley's duff concept. As the lady tries to deny she's duff, more situations make her realize she is. At the cafeteria, the woman at the counter only remembered her friend's name and the attractive guy next to her. The principal also greeted Jess and Casey, but not her. She aced Spanish class, but the teacher only remembered her friends. Random memories flashbacked, and it made sense why Madison never invited her. She is a duff. At home, Bianca looked at some old photos. The more she swiped their pictures, the more she hated Jess and Casey. They looked so pretty, and they made her duff. Bianca woke up the next day and never cared about everything. She got up and wore sweater and colorful socks as her outfit to school. She looked like a rainbow heading downstairs, making Mrs. Piper think she was crazy. In the car, Casey called her, but she refused to pick it up. At the school's parking lot, the lady looked around and noticed her car was duff for being different. Her bad mood continued with Casey and Jess. She cannot look them in the eyes because they make her mad for no reason. Bianca was also irritable and gave negative meanings to things. It came to the point that Jess and Casey were bothered by her attitude and asked what was wrong. Bianca confronted the ladies for not telling her she was their duff. If Wesley did not mention it, she wouldn't have any idea they were using her to make themselves look better. The girl doesn't know what she's talking about, and since when did Wesley's opinion matter to her? Bianca was unbothered and continued nagging. For years they've been together, she wondered why hot and popular girls would want to hang out with her, and now it all makes sense. Bianca unfollowed them on social media sites and also unfriended them in person. Since that day, Bianca has had a different perspective on school, and she was unhappy about it. At the cafeteria, she looked at all the groups and examined each behavior. She has identified the duffs and discovered it has types. The common was the duff in a group, loners could also be identified as self-duff, and the duff among teachers who often feel out of place in the topic. Bianca felt bad for them and wondered if they already knew where they stood in the social hierarchy. They will surely freak out, like how she reacted. Outside, Bianca bumped into Toby. The man notices the colorful socks and finds them cool. It was unexpected, but Bianca dared the man to kiss her. Toby was game and kissed the lady. Bianca enjoyed the moment, kissing Toby in her imagination. Yes, she was only daydreaming because, in reality, she only pronounced two words like usual. Out of embarrassment, Bianca walked away. During the science class, Bianca was wondering why she couldn't talk to Toby. She looked at Wesley, and it seemed easy for him to get along with women. Class ends, but Mr. Fillmore tells Wesley to remain. Bianca overheard it was already his third time getting failing grades on tests. Mr. Fillmore already consulted with the principal, and he decided to suspend him from the team until his grades improve. Coach Grant also agreed, even if he's the football captain. Wesley was afraid to lose his scholarship and the chance to enter college. Bianca felt bad for him, but she has an idea. Wesley was practicing for a game when Bianca bothered him. Bianca was tired of being duff or being the approachable one. She wants to reinvent herself and be the dateable one. Wesley looked at her, and she seemed too desperate for dating advice. Wesley ignored the lady and ran, but Bianca followed. She revealed to have a crush on Toby Tucker. The problem is she can't seem to talk to him, and she believes he is the right man to seek advice from. 
She saw him earlier at the laboratory, and he naturally gets along with people. Wesley doubted why she was asking for his help when she hated him so much. Bianca confirmed this, but she was thankful for making her realize about being the Duff because if not, she would have no idea Jess and Casey were taking advantage. The lady offered to help Wesley in passing science if he would also help her. Wesley thought it was unfair because he had a more challenging task. It would be a piece of cake to teach him because she aces in science even if she sleeps. Meanwhile, it would be difficult to reinvent a person like her. Bianca felt insulted, so she walked away. She only stopped when the man changed his mind. Bianca was smiling from ear to ear, but the man would only help her if she pleaded in a monster voice. It was too awkward for Bianca, but she did it for Toby. After that, they made a deal. Bianca will start with the goal of tutoring Wesley to pass the chemistry midterms. Wesley, on the other hand, told Bianca to meet him at the mall on the weekend at noon for her transformation. Bianca wondered why they needed to go to a store with girly stuff when she could do it with Jess and Casey. The man real talked Bianca, saying she has bad posture and it will only be fixed once she chooses the right size of undergarments. Wesley already formulated ways how to get things done, and step one is stressing that first impression matter. Bianca had no choice but to follow his advice. After shopping for clothes, she looked better in a denim jumper. However, it doesn't end like that, and they will proceed to step two, time to show the world who she is. Wesley advised her to pick more clothes that would represent who she was. She also needs to give up dressing like a boy and tries a new style, preferably a girly look. Bianca tried out more floral dresses, but it doesn't match her personality. Until she found this pink top and floral, it looked good on her and was so far the cloth she rocked. Bianca was confident and posed at different angles while laughing. Suddenly, she saw Wesley filming her. The man thought it would be a great idea to record her to have something to review later. Bianca agreed with the condition of only keeping the footage available to their eyes. Wesley promised, and it made her even more confident to be herself. Bianca enjoyed trying out different outfits and Ramp walked to Wesley like crazy. The more outfits she tries, the more wildly she dances. She showed Wesley how she would flirt with Toby. Bianca was getting weird as minutes passed by, so Wesley decided to stop filming to protect her. However, the lady insisted on recording her. She confessed to the mannequin as if it was Toby and kissed it. Wesley was entertained by her moves and couldn't stop laughing. Little did they know Madison's friend, Caitlin, saw them. She speculated Bianca was flirting with Wesley based on her actions. Caitlin was already there for minutes, and she filmed everything. Madison was so mad seeing Caitlin's message. She was also strolling at the mall, so it was great timing. Wesley, on the other hand, reviewed the video where Bianca looked better when smiling. Step 3 is to smile more, and she's doing great so far. The displayed long-sleeved black dress caught Bianca's eyes. It was stunning but doubted if it would look good on her. Wesley saw her eyes on the dress, but she hesitated to try it on. The two decided to take a break for a meal. While dining, Wesley thought of teaching Bianca how to overcome fear, since she felt scared to initiate a conversation with Toby. He found a guy in a sweater and dared Bianca to walk over and get his phone number. Bianca was reluctant, so Wesley taught her what to say when she got there. Bianca stood up and fixed herself. She walked towards the man who was enjoying a snack. He was a man in his 40s and an introvert, so he was awkward when the lady approached him. Bianca successfully initiated a conversation, so Wesley signaled her to get his number. The lady asked the man if he wanted to go out with her. He slowly processed what she said and burst into laughter. He thought the lady was pranking, so he asked her YouTube channel. Bianca went back to Wesley, embarrassed. The lady was so mad at Wesley for teaching her a lesson that humiliated her. Wesley requested her to calm down because it was only a warm-up. He challenged her to talk to 15 guys based on step 5, take a few hits. Bianca liked his idea and accepted the challenge. She strolled around the mall but had difficulties approaching men, especially the serious ones. A few minutes after, a man talked to her but eventually got bored with the conversation and left. Bianca was hopeless about accomplishing the task until a man sat near her. He was asking how her day went, seeing her tired face. Bianca became alive, and their conversation was natural. The guy is Alan, a topping consultant in a yogurt place. Bianca never knew such work existed because she is bad at picking toppings. Wesley, on the other hand, was relaxing in a massage chair and wondered what had happened to Bianca. Shortly after, the lady arrived and boasted she got a guy's number. Bianca thanked Wesley because she felt better about herself after the task. Afterward, the lady handed her thick chemistry notes, and told the man it had all the information he needed to pass the midterm. Madison came with Caitlin, feeling suspicious about Wesley and Bianca together. Wesley wanted to run, but it was too late. He reasoned out they only bumped into each other. Madison insulted the two before leaving. After that, Wesley and Bianca parted ways. The man still needs to study chemistry, while Bianca has an event to attend. Bianca went home and saw her mom capturing photos of herself. She was creating an account on dating up and updating her profile picture. Mrs. Piper chose a photo of herself in business attire, which was too formal to look at. Bianca helps her out by cropping the old pictures with her dad. She seems relaxed in the image, unlike the last one. Bianca was so happy to see her mom finding a date like her. The lady opened up she had a crush on someone but was too shy to approach him. 
Good thing that Wesley was there to help. Mrs. Piper wondered why she sought Wesley when Casey and Jess would be the best people to ask. Bianca revealed she had already separated from them, which was her decision. Mrs. Piper reminded her to be mentally tough in making decisions because it tends to lessen problems, and good things are bound to happen after. At school, Bianca saw her friends again. They were waving hi to her, but she acted not to notice. She plans to continue what she started. Bianca believes she made the right decision, and good things are bound to happen, as her mom says. Suddenly, her phone beeped, so she checked it out. It was a clip of her at the mall. The video has been edited and captioned with Duff Love. Music was also inserted, and her crazy actions were even made funnier. It can also be heard how she fantasizes about her crush Toby Tucker. She remembered Wesley's last recording, and she could not believe he had broken his promise. Bianca tried to relax since it only had six views. However, the video was forwarded to more students, and the Duff Love became viral on Snap. Bianca froze, seeing everyone humiliating her. Their laughs were contagious and loud that she wanted to disappear from their sight. More and more memes were created about her being madly in love with Toby. Bianca ran to the toilet and hid there, crying. The lady thought she had escaped the embarrassment, but students in the comfort room still talked against her. She could overhear their insults, and she couldn't take it anymore. The video reached Mr. Arthur and the principal, who were highly concerned about it. Good thing Bianca's friend Casey was a hacker and shut the site down. The principal was relieved to see the video deleted. Because of the incident, Principal Buchanan thought cyberbullying was getting worse in the institution, so he banned students from using social media sites on school premises. He told everyone that Malloy High would be put under internet martial law. Students will be required to turn in their cell phones to their teachers and only have them back at the end of the day. Mr. Fillmore feels satisfied with collecting all the phones. He also agreed with the new mandate so that students can experience having no phones like in his childhood days. He also lectured them to use actual facial expressions instead of relying on emoticons. Even after the principal's announcement, it never stopped making Bianca the famous duff in school and the least liked person. Her video also made other students realize they were duffs, and they blamed Bianca for the extreme insecurities they felt. Worse, she saw Toby in the corridor, and he looked furious. Bianca went to the cafeteria to confront Wesley. His friends were also making fun of her, making her temper high. Wesley never initiated to stop them. Out of anger, she poured Wesley's meal into his face and walked out. Bianca returned home, traumatized by the major blunder she had made in life. Someone knocked on the door, and it was Wesley. Bianca punched him first before letting him in. He swore to the lady he never spread the video recorded last time. The camera angle was also not from where he was sitting. Earlier, he heard Madison talking about it with friends and believed she was the one behind it. Bianca listened to his explanation. Wesley's hands were wounded, and the lady was touched, knowing he punched some men at school for her. Wesley also gave a little peace offering for calling her duff. It was the black dress Bianca was eyeing at the mall. The lady was extremely happy but remembered bumping into Toby earlier. He barely looked at her, and it was bothering her. Bianca decides to write a long letter to apologize. Wesley disagrees, and told the lady there's no reason to apologize, and encourages her to follow step 6, just own it. Wesley suggested admitting to the crazy video and confessing she was into him. And if ever he gets mad, it won't be her problem anymore. Class ended, and everyone retrieved their phones. Bianca saw Toby and approached him. She was straightforward and admitted that her crazy confession on the video was true because she liked him. Surprisingly, Toby was not mad. He was even flattered and impressed at the same time. He finds her cool for that. It was their first time talking, and Toby found it great. Bianca bid goodbye but saw Jess and Casey on her way, so she returned to Toby. She invited the man to hang out with her for some time. Toby was game for it and invited her over to his house. Bianca couldn't hold her happiness and headed to the boys' locker room to inform Wesley. The man was so happy for her but wondered what the problem was. Bianca has never been on an actual date before, so she wants to seek advice. Wesley formulated a plan and illustrated it on the board. He wants to help Bianca make their date memorable by kissing Toby. Wesley suggested they should dine in booths for intimacy, so he highly recommended eating at Dave and Buster's. Lighting is also important because it sets romance in the room. Once Toby leans in or tries to impress her, he wants to be kissed. Mr. Arthur saw Bianca. She is his favorite writer, and he feels bad about the incident she got involved in. He reminded the lady about the famous phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword, and challenged her to make her writing with positive effect. The article about homecoming was due, but Bianca had no idea what to write. She asked for an extension because all she thought about at the moment was writing against the people who bashed her. But Mr. Arthur picked her for a reason, believing in her. He told the lady whatever she writes will be the lead story, so it should be an inspiring one. Bianca went to Wesley's to give the chemistry book. She overheard his parents quarreling. Wesley struggled to deal with his parents' imminent divorce, and he didn't want to share it. Seeing the man in pain, Bianca decided to bring him somewhere. She drove the car to the forest and walked until they reached her favorite spot, the Thinking Rock. Like how she named it, Bianca sits there to think, at times, she's problematic. 
As soon as Wesley sat on the rock, he felt comfortable and shared he wanted his parents to get a divorce than see them arguing. Bianca comforted him because she could also relate. Suddenly, Wesley kissed her. Bianca was caught off guard but never pulled away. When Wesley stops, he stutters to explain what just happened. The atmosphere was awkward, so he reasoned it was only practice for step 8. He also joked about it, convincing Bianca it doesn't mean anything. Bianca went with the flow and joked around to make him happy. It was effective because Wesley felt better. Little did they know Caitlin was behind the shrubs and captured everything. Bianca was closing the locker when Madison appeared before her. She showed other humiliating recordings of her at the mall talking to men. Madison plans to spread the funny video to the public soon. Bianca was furious because she seemed to have a grudge against her. Madison boasted she and Wesley were getting back together and got mad about the kiss in the forest. And it was such an insult her ex-boyfriend was hitting on Duff. Bianca was surprised she knew about the kiss. Madison warned the lady never to mess up with a famous person like her. Bianca was laughing inside why Madison was mad at her when she never had feelings for Wesley. The date night came, and Bianca wore the black dress that Wesley gave her. She went downstairs and was startled to see her mom, not in pantsuits. She looked stunning in her black dress. Mrs. Piper will have an internet date, and she is excited about it. Mrs. Piper also noticed her daughter looking great in a dress. Bianca was flattered and told her mom it was Wesley's gift. Mrs. Piper was delighted she was dating Wesley. Bianca denied it, and it was Toby she would be seeing. Mrs. Piper noticed she looked tense, so she reminded her to be herself and that everything will be fine. Outside, Bianca saw Wesley studying, so she teased him. The man showed his test paper, and he passed it. He can play football again this year, according to Coach Grant. Bianca was so proud he did it because she knew how he badly wanted the scholarship. Wesley noticed she was wearing the one he had bought. His eyes sparkled seeing her dressed like a fine lady. Bianca told the man her date with Toby would be tonight. Wesley's mood changed, and he went silent. Bianca finds his reaction weird, so she asks if he's okay. Wesley said he feels great getting good grades and her having a date like how they planned it before. He faked a smile and wished her the best. Toby welcomes her home but finds the lady overdressed for the night. Bianca immediately invited her out to Dave and Buster's, as Wesley suggested. Toby declined because he had already prepared a date for them at home. He thought of making their night more special, so he cooked sushi. Toby excused himself for a minute because he was cooking baked crab rolls. Bianca was rattled because Wesley only trained her in Dave and Buster's diner. The chairs were three feet apart, and it would be hard to kiss, so Bianca moved it near Toby's seat. She also remembered about the lights, and darker is better. She turned off the lights, but Toby turned them on after. He also returned with the baked sushi he had made. It looked like restaurant quality. The two had a great conversation, and Bianca slowly noticed some signs that Toby wanted to be kissed. The man was leaning on her as he shared how he loved music. He was fond of making poems and then turning them into songs later on. In the middle of waiting for the second sign, Wesley appeared on Toby's face. Bianca tried to brush it off, but she failed. When she concentrated on Toby, the second sign showed, trying to impress. The man proudly said he made a song and he would love to play it later to her. Bianca freaked out seeing Wesley again, and it bothered her. She went to the comfort room and slapped her face. She was not into Wesley, but why did he keep appearing? After dinner, they stayed outside for Toby's song. Bianca got cold, and Toby offered his jacket. The man started singing, and he was staring at Bianca. He looked sincere that the lady had butterflies. Bianca thought the song was great, even if he said it needed to be polished. Toby got curious about how Bianca felt after the video spread. The lady admitted she was embarrassed because many people saw it. But the saddest part was she got into a fight with her best friends, and she didn't know how to approach them. Toby encouraged her to talk to them because, for him, Jess and Casey understand people. After hearing that, Bianca wondered how he knew their personalities. Toby said he had already met them in class and organizations. They are also popular, and it's not surprising that everyone knows them. Toby continued talking, and this time, he was complimenting her best friend's physical appearance. Bianca started to get jealous because he had never said those words to her. Suddenly, Toby asked if the lady felt intimidated to be friends with the powerful and pretty ladies who liked them. He also asked if they already had dates for the homecoming. Bianca was furious and realized Toby was duffing her. She is approachable, and he uses her to get close to Jess and Casey. Toby had no idea about the duff thingy she was talking about, but he admitted something. When she asked him to hang out last time, he thought she was hinting that Jess and Casey would also come tonight. He also assumed her best friends were into him, so he tried cooking sushi to impress them. Out of disappointment, Bianca walked away. Toby stopped her for the jacket, but the lady threw it into the trash bin. Because of that, the lady discovered he only ordered sushi from a local store and served it like his dish. Bianca went to her car crying. She also called Wesley, but he never picked up, and she was directed to the voicemail. Bianca told him about Toby duffing her the whole time. She wants his advice and pleads to call her back sooner. Bianca never went home but drove to the forest. She was feeling down and wanted to go to the Think Rock. Wesley was there with Madison, and they were having fun. 
They also kissed, and it made her jealous. Bianca spent the night in her room, crying. Someone knocked on the door, and it was Wesley. He returned home soon after he received her text message. But Bianca looked tired and told him to forget about it and go home. Wesley feels sorry about what Toby did to her. Bianca was teary and looked at Wesley. She saw him earlier with Madison on her Think Rock. It was important to her because it was her special place. Wesley wondered why she was mad when he told him before he could use it. Besides, she is with Toby, and he never thought she would visit at night. Bianca clarified they are not friends because people like him won't hang out with a duff like her. He was even embarrassed at school whenever she went near to him. The reality is football men only hang out or date hot girls like Madison, while unattractive people like her never experience dating anyone. Wesley gets confused about what she means, and she talks like a different person. Bianca told the man to forget their deal because it only worked on him, but not for her. Wesley lay in bed, thinking about Bianca. He had no idea why she was mad when he never did anything to her. Bianca, on the other hand, was looking at Wesley's window. She somehow regretted shouting at him earlier. His lights were turned off, so she also decided to sleep. The weekend came, and Bianca was not in the mood to go outside. She spent all the hours in her room writing about the article. She decided to focus on how she felt about homecoming. Such an event may be special to others, but it cannot be denied that the majority are more pressured to find a perfect date than to enjoy the night. Her article may sound rude or negative, but she sent it without hesitation. If there is a thing she regrets, it is how she left things with Jess and Casey. They came over to her house, and Bianca apologized. Duff was only a word, but it hurt her deeply, and it made her insecure about herself. Jess and Casey are pretty, so she never opened up about the issue because they would surely not understand her feelings. Casey told her even though she and Jess have insecurities, never a second they thought she was different from them. She is the smartest among the three, also the loyal and the funny one. Since they are a team, Casey and Jess are not complete without her. Bianca was touched by their words and thanked them for accepting her again. Homecoming will be later, so Jess and Casey decided to dump their dates and have a girls' night instead. Bianca refuses because she doesn't want to bump into Toby and Wesley. She requested the ladies just to let her stay at home and enjoy her pizza. The ladies were startled when Mrs. Piper joined the conversation. She heard everything after eavesdropping. It made sense to her why their friendship was broken for a while. Bianca told her mom she also experiences the five stages of grief, and she is currently in the final stage, which is acceptance. Mrs. Piper gave her honest advice. She described her daughter as a weirdo, and it's about time to own it and be the best weirdo she can ever be. Bianca spent the whole month worrying about what other people think about her, and tonight is the time to worry about what she thinks about herself. She pushed Bianca to get dressed and rock the homecoming. Mrs. Piper's lengthy speech was effective because it inspired Bianca. Jess, as the fashionista among the three, was in charge of Bianca's outfit. She designed a dress made out of her favorite checkered long sleeves and the black dress Wesley gave her. It turned out great, and Jess described it as her best creation. Loud music filled the venue, and students had fun dancing. Madison doesn't enjoy it much because she is pressured to look the prettiest. Homecoming King and Queen would soon be announced, so she prepared herself near the stage to get the best lighting. She also instructed Caitlin to record her special moment. Wesley, on the other hand, looked handsome but unhappy. He was still bothered about their major fight with Bianca. Suddenly, Bianca and the girls arrived. They looked stunning in their outfit, but Bianca caught Wesley's attention. The lady also glanced at him and smiled. She was a head-turner on that evening and was flattered to receive compliments. Jess and Casey left her to talk to Wesley. Bianca apologized for the hurtful words she said the other night. She also had the courage to confess her feelings to him. However, it was bad timing because Wesley was in a relationship with Madison again. Bianca was hurt but understood the situation. Whatever makes him happy would be her happiness too. Madison saw Bianca talking to her man. Jealous, she rushed to guard Wesley against the lady. She noticed her new look and made fun of her dress. But since she won't leave Wesley, she will be forced to release the video the next day. Bianca was not threatened and even motivated her to do so. Madison annoyed her by saying Wesley would not choose Duff over her. Wesley called out Madison's attitude, but Bianca told the man she could handle it herself. The lady admitted she is Duff, and so is Madison. There will always be better people, more talented, pretty, and richer than her, and she cannot avoid that. Bianca also lectured her to stop wasting her time labeling someone to keep them down. It was only making her busy with other people and end up missing great things around her. She has Wesley, but she treats him like stupid. And people don't like him because he is dating a popular girl but because he is a fantastic guy. Wesley was touched and realized she made sense, because Madison only gets back together with him if she's bored. Madison was pissed off with Bianca's confidence. She is now loving herself and doesn't care to be called Duff anymore. Madison and Wesley were announced as the homecoming king and queen. Madison went upstage, but Wesley was reluctant. Everyone was waiting for him to get the crown, but in the end, he chose to get his girl. He refused the title and kissed Bianca in front of the crowd. 
The students screamed, thrilled, witnessing the lovebirds. Wesley and Bianca left the venue, making Madison furious. Bianca got inspired and headed to the newsroom to edit her article. Malai High School's publication, The Pitchfork, released Bianca's article entitled Tales of a High School Duff as the issue's front page. It circulated the campus and went viral. Because of Bianca, Duff became a positive word, and more and more students were never ashamed to be called as one. Mr. Arthur was also impressed with the article and admitted he is Duff. Wesley passed science and will soon enter Ohio State. Bianca, on the other hand, will also study at Northwestern for college. Their relationship became official, and Bianca was more confident than ever. She advised Duff's like her that no matter what labels are thrown your way, only you can define yourself.